John S. Rhodes here. I have an incredible statistic to share with you. I just read that 25% of all Americans have less than $0 of net worth. In other words, they are underwater. 25% of all Americans are underwater. That is, they owe more than they have saved, which is pretty darn incredible. And there are a load of people who are struggling, perhaps you, and this is something to be thinking about. If your net worth is below zero, that means that a baby being born right now with zero dollars, a baby has a higher net worth than you. And even though that baby has zero dollars, if you are negative, then a baby has a higher net worth, which is very, very bizarre to think about. But at the same time, folks are struggling and that's what this is about. So we're going to begin with a zero net worth. And in a, another training, I have talked about what would allow you to instantly be secure with millions of dollars. There are tools that are available that give you the same effect, the same impact as literally having uh, a million or millions of dollars in your pocket. And so I encourage you to look at my other videos. My brother and I have been posting these videos for you. So take a look and uh, really in one step, you can have over a million dollars. It's pretty incredible. Now, that being said, if your net worth is zero or below, pay close attention. If you're above, above zero, I think you're going to like this an awful lot as well. So the very first thing that you'll want to think about is going from where you're at to being above zero dollars. So even having one dollar of positive net worth and moving in that direction is the smartest thing you can do financially right now. And when you're building up, it's a good idea to have six months to one year of income to cover anything that that comes up. So that might be considered your emergency fund. And that might take some work. It might take some time, but you do need to have cash for emergencies set aside. But then what? What have I found? Well, what's radical here is that AI has completely changed the game. So artificial intelligence has completely changed the game. And this is what I mean. It's made it very clear that in the future, there might be fewer and fewer jobs that pay very little money. Entry-level jobs could be getting squeezed out. Uh, perhaps there'll be more lower income types of jobs, but I'm not sure about that, especially the physical manual labor types of jobs. Automation, robots, AI are going to continue to take jobs almost for sure. Now, that being said, I've had a lot of people that have asked me, well, what do I do? Should I learn new skills? And it's true. There are many skills that you could acquire, but if you acquire the wrong skills, then you could obsolete yourself. So I know a lot of people 10, 15 years ago were really hell bent on learning programming as a great example. And I learned some programming myself. I'm not a great programmer, but I can program. It's the language of computers. But these days, uh, AI will write code for you. And you can hire people for next to nothing to verify the code. You can even use AI to do the code verification. So AI uh, using AI, which is pretty darn interesting. But that's not the point. That's just an aside. What really matters is that the skill that you ought to learn is not some technical skill. Uh, definitely, it's not about the facts and figures. It's not about memorization. Um, in, a, in a larger part, in a, in a larger way, it's about creativity. It's about being able to have certain insights that other people don't have. The creativity angle is very powerful. If you can learn how to be creative, you can learn how to use AI. And you can learn how to use AI in ways that other people cannot use AI, but it goes deeper than that. So becoming creative is possible. Becoming creative is 
absolutely possible and it's not something that's just inborn. Why does this matter? It means that you can learn to be creative. You can actually learn to become creative. It's not an inborn natural trait. Now, some people are more naturally creative than others, but even people that are very logical and structured, people who are, you know, the engineers of the world, um, you know, the, the Spocks, right, to use a Star Trek reference, those folks that we're talking about here, they can still learn to be creative. Now, it might be more narrow, it might be creativity in a narrow dorm domain, but it's really about the learning. So the insight is not about being creative. That is more of an outcome. So what is it about? Learning how to learn. That is probably the most valuable skill, learning how to learn. If you're gonna learn anything, it's how to learn more, how to learn faster, how to acquire new skills as they come to be. As new technology is launched, created, uh, put forth, as new products come to market, new services are provided, learning how to learn alongside of AI, learning how to learn with AI, learning how to learn from yourself, learning, for example, how to meditate and better focus and use your time. Learning how to learn means reading and consuming information faster. I'll give you an example. This is probably about four or five years ago at this point. I found myself listening to podcasts I also found myself watching many different types of training videos, and I realized that I had no problem keeping up with the training. So what I did is I upped the speed, the playback speed to 1.25%, and I got used to that, then 1.5, then 1.75, and now I very, very regularly move along at twice the speed, and I'm looking for ways of even going faster than that. So when you can learn at twice the speed, you are learning how to learn, but you're doing it twice as fast. So in other words, if you have a podcast or a video that you're watching running at twice the speed, you're learning twice as fast. So you, you can learn how to learn faster. You can learn how to learn better. So something like a memory retention or pausing, and when you do the kind of activity I'm talking about, you could utilize learning how to learn this way. You could learn something and say, you know what? What I can do is learn how to capture the information into maybe a mind map or notes for a book that you might write. In other words, uh, how do you take bullet points, notes? How do you connect all the dots, put them together? How do you find references? How do you dig deeper? You can go wide, you can go deep. And I can continue on this over and over and over. What matters is learning how to learn is the ultimate skill. Now, that will not be the case for a few, a very small handful of people. And those people are the ones that are at the very, very top, the apex of their careers and other skills. It's difficult to, to learn how to learn when you're very, very, very competent and you're at the top. In fact, the learning how to learn for the premier, you know, apex predators uh, at the very top of the, of the mountain, it's actually about unlearning, unwinding what you know. So learning how to unlearn is a secret that many of the most advanced people have exploited or utilized. They have deliberately written down their assumptions. They've deliberately captured what it is that they're not even sure about, that they think that they know, but then they test. They look at the assumptions, the uh, you know presumptuous nature of, of man. They, they look at what they are assuming to be true. And so again, the, the apex predators in any domain, any really, really great human who is super competent in something is often best served by unlearning. So let's put it together. We've got learning how to learn, or if you are truly a genius, if you're a top competitor, learning how to unlearn, and then you can utilize the learning how to learn paradigm again. 
this all matters because if we're able to outwit, outsmart other people, and we learn how to provide value to them, then we'll always be one step ahead. Now, this does not mean deceive. This does not mean trick. This does not mean any of that. What it means is you find ways to provide tremendous value to other people. So learning how to learn how to make money, learning how to learn how to get more physically fit, learning how to learn how to improve your relationship. So you're not learning how to make more money. You're not learning how to improve your health. You're not learning how to improve a relationship. Anyone can do that. But if you learn how to learn about money, then you're a step ahead. If you learn how to learn about health, learning how to learn about the relationships in your life, that means one critical thing. If you've learned how to learn these things, that means you are able to uh, exploit one of the most valuable skills ever, and that is teaching, training, and presenting the material to other people. That gives you the ability to easily influence and persuade other people, write sales copy, write emails. Um, you can do things like shoot video. Another thing you're able to do is create digital products, info products. You're able to freelance and consult at the highest levels when you've done these things. Now, it might take a moment for you to have this all sort of sink in. Feel free to watch the video again so you can fully absorb what I'm talking about so that you don't have a zero or less net worth. So you can accumulate assets. You want to accumulate money, but that money is useless unless it's turned into assets. When you learn how to learn and when you acquire these skills, when you become the apex predator and you also know how to unlearn properly and you apply the knowledge and you can teach and train and create digital products, you are now someone who is unstoppable and this will move you away from a zero net worth or below. You will acquire skills and assets that are practically invaluable. You can make them valuable through production. If you're learning, that is very often consumption. You're acquiring knowledge and skills. But when you learn how to learn and you learn how to unlearn, now you have truly become powerful. You have more power than you could possibly imagine because rather than being a consumer, you become a producer. And when you produce, you are able to then put that product or service, you can put yourself out there for sale. And you will be far ahead of other people who have not learned or learned how to learn. And certainly they have not learned how to unlearn. This is critical. Again, this moves you away from zero and less than zero because you'll making you'll be making money faster than you ever imagined. And then when you have that excess money that you've saved up and now you have a, a safety net, that buffer in place, now you can begin to acquire assets. And assets, keeping it very simple, assets are those things that spit off cash flow or they increase in value over time simply by holding them. There are not many assets in the world. Many, many assets or many things that you think are assets are not assets. Great example is maybe you have bought a boat or a car. That is just consumption. It, it, it will not gain in value in most cases. In fact, even a house you have to live in. And if you sold that house, you might think, oh, I have more money now because I sold the house. But you have to live somewhere. So many things that might appear to be assets, might actually be liabilities. And I don't need to go into this. I think that you're savvy enough and sharp enough to know that not everything that you buy is an asset. It's only those things that make you more wealthy over time because they are spitting out cash just by holding them, like dividends or interest income, or they increase in value in general over time. To a degree, this might be real estate. It could possibly be gold. The gold will at least hold its value and increase in value in a way over time. Could be Bitcoin. You hold the Bitcoin and it goes up over time. Something of an asset there. We can talk about 
these things at a at a different time. But what matters is is that it's holding its value or increasing in value over time. Truly, an asset. My favorite assets are almost always those that um, are like businesses, like stocks, and they spit off cash in the form of dividends. I just really, really love dividend stocks because the dividends often go up, and they the business uh, underneath the stock is what's powering the dividends and the cash flow. So in other words, it's an ongoing entity and more and more cash is, is generated by that uh, profit getting company. So that's a, a real asset in the, in the clearest sense in my mind. There are other assets of course as, as well. Here's what matters. If you just hold cash, cash will inflate away. Cash will go away. It will inf inflate away because the purchasing power of your actual currency, the dollars will go down and down and down over time. Whereas assets usually increase in value and the amount of cash they spit off increases as well. It's a beautiful thing, but you can only do that after you have a safety net in place. Perhaps you also have some wink, wink life insurance in place for a safety net there as well, which I've talked about before that can make you very wealthy uh, in a, in a really uh, profound mental way. Uh, check out our videos. You'll see more about that. Okay. So assets are absolutely critical. I want to make sure that you understood what you're really striving for to get off of zero or a negative net worth. You need learning. You need to learn how to learn. You need to learn how to unlearn in those small focused areas where you're truly an expert. You need more than just cash, more than just dollars, more than just holding on to something. Um, make sure that when you are purchasing assets that they actually are assets, not perceived assets like boats and cars that depreciate over time, lose value. You don't want that. And you want those assets because you want money to be working for you. Money only works for you if it's been invested or put into an asset. Money does not just plain out work for you. You could be earning some interest, so there'd be a little bit of work being done, but not enough. That is why holding assets that increase in value and increase the amount that they spit off, like a dividend paying stock, is really a beautiful thing. And again, it's not the only path, but it is pretty cool. You can invest in businesses, for example. They are worth something. A growing business is worth obviously much more. And those businesses that are growing rapidly and there's excess cash, that can be reinvested in the business or handed out to the share owners or the, uh, the business owners. That is a, a beautiful thing as well. So continue to refine your mind, continue to rethink what you think um, life is about and what money is about and what you want it for. And you'll continue to get more wealthy as you take action in the right direction. My name is John S. Rhodes, along with my brother, Matt Rhodes. We are the Rhodes Brothers. Thanks for spending time with us. Look below for more teaching, more training, and more help on your journey to where you want to get to. I'm assuming health, wellness, fitness, and great relationships, but obviously loads and loads of cash. We have a ton of information in the description below. Take a look at that and enjoy. We'll see you in the next training. Thank you very much.